Hello, Angola. Hello. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm going to use English. <laughs> well, um, there are always a number of reasons why we go to hospitals every day. And um, there again, a number of reasons why you'll always hear people crying and screaming each time you visit the hospital. One reason well known to all of us is um, one deadly disease that has killed the biggest number of people in the world. This disease is called malaria. Malaria has killed people from over 100 countries all over the world, putting a, biggest, a big number of people at risk. It is again known that malaria is common in the tropics of the globe, that is South America, Africa, and Asia. It is again really, really sad that it has to be children below the age of five. This could be your daughter, it could be, it could be the next Oprah Winfrey or the I don't know, it could be just anyone who could be very, very useful about 10 or 20 or 30 years afterwards. Imagine if, that's, if that was your, your little baby, about three years of age. Annoying is the kind of death could be as a result of a small bite, but a small insect well known to all of us. I believe everyone has had experience with that. Good. <clears throat> After the small bite, a mosquito will always put something known as plasmodium into your body, and this goes to your bloodstream. When it gets to your blood, it always settles in the white, you know, red blood cells, and uh, a lot goes on after that. I'm going to show you just a small video that will show you exactly what happens. That's now plasmodium getting into your red blood cells. It then settles in there, reproduces and multipl multiplies. As you realize, the cell will always change shape, and a lot of other components about the shape will always change. I'm not a doctor, but um, I'm a software engineer, but I've taken a lot of time to really read about this and consult so much about it. If we are to look into the way or the different ways how malaria has been able to be diagnosed around Africa and other parts of the world where malaria is a problem, it takes quite a lot of things and a lot of time. Among those is uh, a lot of equipment, which includes the needles, uh, the glass slides, the chemicals, the microscopes, the doctors, and you know access to power and all those things. Uh, being critical and realistic, not every part of Africa has power. Not every not every medical personnel can be able to actually carry out the diagnosis. And if you realize, uh, if you, to get to the ratio of arts and science students in Africa, you always have the big side being arts, right? Uh, that means you're not gonna have the kind of experience and skill sets around to really do the actual diagnosis for the disease. It's the biggest reason many have gone to hospital and they tell them, you're fine. And then you try to go to another hospital, they tell you, you're sick. <laughs> It was with that background that I and a team of friends sat down and said, hey, we should do something about this. Like I said, none of us is a medic. But it takes quite a lot. It, it, takes, it takes realization and determination, and you can always make it. Uh, like I said before, still, we had to do a lot of research and a lot into the medics that we can always bring real solutions to, to life. Uh, 
It went worse when Brian got sick with the same disease. We always pushed him to hospital several times, and it always took us about over 40 minutes just for, you know, results for one person. And there were always long lines in hospitals, and by then on campus, we had lectures. So you always ended up missing a full lecture just because you pushed a friend to hospital. Then we said, how could we try to have something really affordable and easy and simple to use that's going to be anywhere or, you know, just available for anyone to do, you know, tests? We go to our research and we looked into a couple of, you know, research that, that has been done before about how best to diagnose the disease. And it's, uh, it's quite unfortunate that we realized a lot of research is concentrated on the treatment side of malaria rather than the diagnosis side. Uh, well, as a kid, we used to hear of quinine and, you know, transition to chloroquine, Fancida, Coatem, and a lot, of, a lot of medicines. But we still see the same microscope being used over and over again. During the research, we realized there are many ways we can always have access to the inner parts of the body. This is because with the old method of diagnosis, you realize there's always that one thing you will never miss out on. It's that prick of the needle. Uh, I believe even the people around here who are over 18 years still fear that the prick. Uh, it's always worse with the babies. So we thought, how could we first of all put off the pain, and then we can move on with the diagnosis? We realized we can always use red light to go through the skin and then get to the red blood cells. We first tried out this using um, real blood samples that are stored in you know, hospitals after people have gone to test. Then after getting our results, we said, okay, now how do we go back to get the blood inside the skin. We had to read into, you know, properties of the skin and stuff like that, and we ended up using light scattering to get to the blood cells. It is through this that we came up with an application called Matibabu. Matibabu is a Swahili word that means treatment. It's a combination of a software application and a small piece of hardware codenamed the Matiscope. With a diagnosis, we're able to do a malaria test within less than a minute. The small microscope comprises of some LED that does red light and a simple light sensor. We basically look into the pattern of light that is scattered back by the red blood cells. And from this, we're able to send a signal to the phone to be processed to give you your results. Um, as you realize, we somewhere have a, an audio jacket into the phone. We just try to convert the light intensity values into an audio signal that is then sent to the phone for processing. I believe if every one of you had this kind of thing, diagnosis would go quite very easy for you. You'd be able to, you know, test from home every day almost and perhaps anywhere. Uh, we look mainly into um, seven little kids and the mothers. We all know that the, one of the reasons for miscarriages is always malaria. We're done. <laughs> anyway. I give my thanks to quite a number of organizations. They include the Resilient Africa Network, uh, which is a project by the USA that is trying to, you know, support organizations that are going to make Africa more resilient. Because we do believe we're going to have African solutions to African problems. We should not wait on the white man to come, you know, work on a disease that he himself does not really have an experience with. 
thanks to you and women that's given us some good support, the Imagine Cup and Microsoft. And big thanks to TEDx Luanda. Thank you.